Hello there and welcome to the Impact Zone podcast. I've got some breaking news. And guys, I don't think you can guess what that's all about, can you? Holy shit, guys. Um, that is the first thing that I thought when I saw this. Because we are talking about Jordan Grace uh, and Roxanne Perez having a match at WWE NXT Battlegrounds. <laughs> um... I know I'm not going to be the first person putting this stuff out there. I'm definitely not going to be the last one, though. But holy heck, bro. What the heck? What is going on? I was so surprised, bro, with what this, with this, like, what, what is this? Like, we saw Jordan Grace in, in the Royal Rumble, and that was, like, mind-blowing as it was. And, but you could kind of understand why she was in the Rumble, because Naomi was in the Rumble. It made some sort of kind of sense for them to both be in the Rumble because they both had a linking story that kind of went together. You could understand that if she wasn't in there, of course, it wouldn't have hurt that Rumble at all. Well, I guess it would have hurt the Rumble a little bit, but it probably wouldn't have hurt it that much to, have, to not have Jordan Grace in there. Um... But I think she was the biggest highlight, probably, of, or the biggest surprise, probably, of the Rumble, at least in the women's one. There was a few good surprises in the women's Rumble, but the men's one was a little bit, uh, uh, they didn't do very good with that, but whatever, uh, it, that happens sometimes, no one bats a thousand, it won't. Go into that. I want to go into this. I want to go into this because, again, like she, like Jordan's having a match next week with someone. I forget. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, guys. I don't have all the details and I don't remember them all because they're fairly minor uh, details anyway. At this moment, I think. Like, it doesn't matter what, what, the, who, and what, and where, and how, and why that much to me. Or even, I think, to that many people, I think, oh, if you do uh, want to know all the details, I'm sure that the WWE has them all, and I'm sure they're out there on Twitter and Instagram and all the social medias and whatnot. So don't come to me to ask me where, what's going on and when and where and how and why, etc. I have no clue. <laughs> I'm just reacting to this stuff and going, holy crap, she's having a match next week, and what is going on? Um... So, yeah, like, and this is for the NXT women's title. Um, okay, right, sure. Um, um, now, <clears throat> let's simmer our expectations and simmer our excitement just a bit, just to kind of, like, pull back and kind of, like, think about this and consider it from... A pers another perspective, perhaps. And, you know, hey, <laughs> oh boy, uh, you, you can take this in a, in a few different ways. But, like, I remember back in the day, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sounding like a boomer of wrestling here or whatever but i remember back in the day dude that we all used to uh you know put together our you know fantasy booking match cards of wwe versus tna you know aj styles versus john cena or whoever it was whatever you know like things like that you know just like these cards that would look really good, Samoa Joe versus Batista or whatever, whoever it was, you know, like all these things, Amazing Red versus Rey Mysterio, etc. And, you know, the whole, booking the whole, like, invasion, TNA invasion or some sort of crossover sort of thing. Like, it's kind of, like, some stuff has kind of happened here and there, like AJ went to WWE, we know that. And he's kind of done some of those matches. Bobby Roode's gone over there and done a few matches and whatnot. I know he's retired now. I hope I, I do hope he would come out of retirement for one more. But 
hey, if he really is retired, you know, thank you so much, Bobby. But uh, certainly, like, again, he deserves Hall of Fame induction in TNA, definitely, 1,000%. Same with AJ. Um, but look at look at what they did here. This is probably, uh, like, the biggest buzz that they've ever had in NXT. You know, like, and that's the deal. That's the idea. Like, that's what WWE is trying to do. They're trying to take Jordan Grace, who is a very, you know, big, recognizable star on, well, the indie scene, I'll try to use that term for some people who still believe that TNA is on the indie scene, which it definitely isn't. Um, but still, like, that's the perception of some people. If you're not number one or number two, you're in the indies. So, okay, sure, bro, whatever. But she's still definitely on the top of that indies, or one of the few people that's, you know, close to the top of those indies again. Um, so again, yeah, like, like, again, if you were to think about anyone else that's on the Indies, uh, that has a big name, like, who else is there? Like, who has a bigger name than Jordan Grace? Like, try and name somebody. And, uh, yeah, there isn't very many people out there that have the level of, like, things that she has and like even Roxanne like Roxanne was in TNA a few years ago I think she was only there for like two or three matches or something maybe two I think um but yeah she was there for a little while I don't know whether she was ever there before maybe she was I don't I don't know I don't know everything about every single thing but before that she was in Ring of Honor I think that's where she got her start um Oh, well, one of the places where she got a real start, she got a real start there in being a uh, made made superstar. And hey, like <laughs> Mia Yim was on this show, or uh, what's what's her WWE name now? I don't know. Uh, she was in W in TNA. Chelsea Green, she started her career in TNA. Mickey James, she started her career in TNA. Like uh, even Diana Prazo, she started her career in TNA. Like. <laughs> oh well was one of her first early showings was in tna like again i think she was in ring of honor before that still but still like like you look at the history that wwe and tna have kind of had besides ring of honor and besides like new japan and triple a those are the only companies that have been around for more than tw well, like major promotions that have been around for more than 20 years um, so yeah, you've got to look at it from that perspective. They know the value and the worth that is in that TNA, uh, tile and in the name TNA and whatnot in general. So that's again, why they did it. Like they know how good that is and they need anything that they can get to, you know, sort of like combat AEW because AEW is its really its own like proper show. NXT is just kind of like, the I don't want to say developmental, but it is developmental. It's the smallest of the three shows. It's the I don't want to say weakest, but it is the weakest in terms of perception and you know viewership. Yes, it's a much more hardcore and passionate audience, much like the TNA audience, which is a very interesting uh, similarity between the two. And TNA kind of has done a few things that have been similar and kind of set up a lot of things that NXT have been doing uh, and whatnot. So that's interesting. So Hunter's been, you know, watching some TNA there, buddy. <laughs> well done. Uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, that's cool. You know, like... It's funny that to say that no one watches TNA and whatnot, and yet here all these you know wrestling companies are c copying it. Uh, AEW's copying TNA uh, and all of this. It's funny to see that kind of stuff. I know that there's another thing here that's kind of related to TNA, but I don't want to talk about that specifically. Uh, and I do have my reasons for not talking about uh, that. I'm not even going to say his name. I'm sure a few people will know who I am talking about, but there have been a few, like, I don't want to 
you know, jump on too many people's boots or whatever if, if it's not true or whatever. But just for now, until the smoke is sort of cleared, I'm going to steer clear of that until, well, I do think it is real because it's I saw it on Twitter. So, but like that could be a, a work or something. I don't know. But he was saying it about his son. And again, I'm not going to comment much further on that. So I'm not going to go too deep into that. And I know he had a run in AEW as well, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to talk about that either. I'm not talking about him. I'm not talking about that stuff. But I know that kind of relates to kind of some stuff that's, that was going on with him being in TNA in the past and being a part of a very successful tag team uh, there and whatnot. But still... We won't talk about that for now. I'm just going to leave that till uh, some of this other stuff gets uh, cleared up. So, but anyway, the potential here for this match. I don't know, dude. Like, Jordan's challenging for the title. Like, like if she's going to lose, like, how are you going to get her to lose? Like, sh like, sure, it'll have to be shenanigans, I'm sure. Like a thousand percent. Like there's no way that John Grace is losing clean to Roxy. Um, you know, in in this regard, that that's, that's a bad look. But I don't see Jordan winning the title. I just don't see that. It doesn't matter. Like it, it, you could do it, but I just don't see that you should. <laughs> it makes no real goddamn sense for her to do it. But then you start looking the other way because you talk about nxt battleground and that's in a couple of uh maybe it's in a week or two um yeah it's on the 10th so it's in a in a week or so so yeah that's uh that's when that is um so yeah like that is coming up very 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 soon there um so that I believe that that will be after against all odds, which is hang on. Actually, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. Actually, it is in fact after it's four days after that. So there you go. I did not realize that that would that will be very interesting. Uh, part of this conversation now because that is very important when certain things kind of line up because I know TNA does a lot of tapings and whatnot so a lot of the stuff that's happening up to um against all odds has already been taped um and there already seems to be a direction going along in that vein so it's like well now does this really change those plans that have already been taped? Like, I don't know. Or does this really affect that? Or is it just this is a thing that's going to happen in WWE and, you know, it's not really going to affect what's happening in TNA that much. Like, it's not going to mean that a, a, a WWE star is going to, well, you know, contracted star is going to work in TNA or some of them are going to work in TNA. Or maybe are more TNA stars going to appear in, in WWE? <laughs> like, again, like, the wider and larger implications of this are just impossible to say, like, for certain. Like, there's obviously potential they, that I believe that they talked about some potential uh, in, a, in an article, and they did say, hey, this is leading to battleground and there could be more of whatever basically i think uh from from what i'm reading what i read and what i remember reading um so like sure what <laughs> like why not like i don't know like it's just one of those things that it this is great not just for jordan grace it's great for tna and it's great for wwe because again you get like again like i always talk about this one of these things is like when you have two marquee main eventers going up against each other, there is a big, 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 big reason for it because it actually doesn't, it actually isn't that clear cut to some people. If you really look at it, if you look at somebody like, I don't know, Jordan Grace versus Mickey James, that was a match from a few years ago. Um, but 
Mickey James won that match. You know, like a little uh, <laughs> to some extent, but realistically, again, from like a person that was still on the rise and is still kind of on the rise, you can sort of say, well, realistically, that got her in the same conversation, you know, in the same space as a legend as Mickey James and put her in that same space. Now, I know the same thing sort of happened with Mia Yim back when she was in TNA, which was one of her, like, dream matches. And the same thing with uh, Trinity. It was one of her dream matches to have a match with Mickey James, and they had that match as well. Like, so, like, putting somebody, again, like, we talk, I think you talk about this, when Trinity's run came in TNA. That was an amazing run, and they did some really great work with her. And she brang it, you know, like, and hopefully this will do the same. But again, like, you just look at, you know, the whole thing that they could do with somebody. Like, again, they've got, like, I keep saying that they need more TV time for the number of people that they've got to an extent, but they also need more people to fulfill even more TV time because they need even more things. They need more things going on and more you know, sort of short stories to sort of, you know, increase, you know, every week, not just here's something, you know, that's, you know, 30 minutes long or whatever, you know, not like they do that. But again, shorten things down sometimes, make things more concise. Yes, they they might be less deep, but told over a number of weeks, it really helps it out because, again, you can't, like, just you know, spend too much time on all of these things every single week. But anyway, <clears throat> looking again at, like, the micro, the small-scale effect, holy crap, <laughs> even the small-scale effect of just, okay, she's going to come in, she's going to appear on TV, or it's already gotten millions of views, literally millions of views, and likes and retweets and whatnot whatnot it has got people talking and that's that's what both tna and nxt need because hey tna they their tv deal isn't that goddamn amazing nxt's is a lot better but the one thing that they that they kind of lack is that huge star power yes they're trying to build their divisions and whatnot but they don't really have as much star power as what, you know, it is, you know, on the main roster. And it's really tough to take someone from that main roster down to NXT because it feels like a huge, like, demotion in some ways, um, not even just to the talent but to, to the audience and whatnot. Some people do way better, because again, because that was probably under Vince's watch, um, and whatnot, because Vince didn't know what to friggin' do with anyone. He was too busy, you know, chasing around women and trying to rape them and all this other crap and whatnot. But I'm not going to get into that too much either. But still, um, <clears throat> yeah, like, even on the small level of, like, if, even if this was just, like, I'm coming in for, like, this appearance and for next week, which she's already appearing for next week, that's huge. Like, again... The, the fact that she's challenging for the NXT title, that's huge. Absolutely massive. Like, <laughs> like I can't over, I can't think, I don't think we can overstate how important this is. Yes, like, the title's not probably got nearly the history or the, the strength of the Knockouts title or whatever. I think it would be good for Roxanne... Uh, to beat Jordan, even by hook or by crook, etc., um, because then that's something she can continue to sort of crow about and while Jordan is just in TNA, etc., doing her thing. But, like, you look at Against All Odds, which is a few days later, and it's like, well, what if Jordan won? What if she won that title? Like, then you start thinking like, wow, wh wh what, what is the payoff there? Like, it, it, it would be crazy. So I think that that's so 
so unlikely, but it would be amazing. Like, it would be so amazing because, like, like e even if somebody comes in and beats Jordan for the NXT title or the knockout title or both, or even just beats her, it's like, well, that sucks, but, you know, she's such a big star and has been built as such a big star, you know, that I think she could recover and she could, you know, she could handle that. And again, same thing. Like, if she loses, especially by shenanigans uh, at Battleground, it's like, well, so what? <laughs> it's like they needed to, you know, hit her with a, with a nuclear bomb to try to stop her, you know. Like, she's the juggernaut. She's the thick mama pump, you know, like... She's the juggernaut. You're not going to stop her unless you basically kill her, um, or effectively. Um, that's the idea. Like, you're not just... It's crazy. Like, because this would never, never have happened under under Vince's watch. And, like, I've got to give praise to everyone over there in WWE, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, uh, all of those guys, everyone that's in the production, etc., I don't know that everyone that's there, sorry. So I, I only know like a few of the key names, Nick Khan or whatever, and that sort of stuff. So those, everyone that's there that, that have given her this chance and given TNA this little bit of a spotlight, you know, even for that, that is so amazing. And I'm so grateful that they did that. I think that Jordan proves how good she is and proves how valuable the TNA is knockouts division is and you know again she's been a big star for a while roxanne has been sort of a big star ish she's been really building herself up in the last like couple of years as well like so she's starting to get onto that bigger star level and i think she could look to being on the main roster at some point because at least now hey it's not run by vince who has no friggin' idea what to do with anyone and even though minchin i think it is now or me yim is in nxt at least she's like doing something and not just like oh i'm here with the good brothers too sweet And that's all she's done. Like, oh, hey, AJ. You know? Or whatever. It's been like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, and it's a slow process sometimes to get those things going and to go, okay, what are we going to do with this person? Well, what about we put them on NXT and, like, give them some matches or something? Okay, you know, like, and that's fine. Like, again, it might be seen as a downgrade to some people, but if you used well and paid well and have good something good to work with, it's like, well, <laughs> you know, like, that's the key, I think, you know. And she's been given some stuff. Like, I haven't really seen a lot of it, but still, like, she's been given some stuff. And <laughs> same thing here. Been given something. Been given this opportunity to be given this platform. It can only help tna and it can only help nxt and we've like here and there i've talked about you know the potential of natty uh coming in natty by nature uh natty nightheart um for a match at slammiversary and a few people also have been talking about that they've wanted that match she's out of wwe for now seemingly Though, we don't know. So, but still, there is potential there, and I think that that would be a big-time match. I know a few people don't don't particularly want it. They don't want to have somebody that's, you know, sort of, like, floating around and not just going to commit or whatever and just come in for one match. But those blockbuster matches are sometimes what things are made on. You need those blockbuster matches sometimes. You need to build your other your younger and still upcoming stars and you can kind of see jordan is still a you know young and upcoming star in some ways even though she's still a fairly big star to the wider you know wwe and casual audience 
They might not know who she really is or know much about her or know what she's been doing or whatnot, and they might not even follow what she's doing, and they might not even care. But it's like when you give these people that little bit of extra stuff, it's like really helpful. I, same with um, Becky Lynch. We just saw that she's well, – well, not walked out of WWE. She's left WWE, and again, there's potential there for her to come into TNA and do something. She said many years ago that she wanted to come into TNA, um, and we sort of covered that here on the channel a little while back. Like, sure. Like, why not have a short run and do something at Bound for Glory or something and then wander off again? Like, that's another blockbuster match that she could have and it wouldn't do that, you know, have that much necessary needed in it, maybe a month or two's build or something, and then you're there. Like, and you only need to have a couple of matches, like, and then wander off into the sunset again. And or whatever. If you want to do more than that, that would be great. But like again, like there's that potential there for them to come in. And I know again, there's that potential there for them to go to AEW as well. But like, like looking at going to AEW versus looking to, to go to TNA. Like I think it's a real choice, especially for the women. Like if you're a man, maybe you probably be like, oh yeah, I'll just go to AEW. But then again. You look at AEW and it's like, dude, that roster is absolutely freaking stacked. And it's like, well, where do I fit in? Like, Andrade found that out. Miro found that out. Um, the person that I'm not talking about found that out. Um, a fair few people have found that out that, hey, you know, like, if I go there, where do I fit in? Like, what am I going to do? And whatever like like how am i going to fit into that roster it's absolutely stacked so it's like really tough to sort of squeeze in there and there's already so many ex wwe guys over there that it's just like well yeah sure i could go there and basically be wrestling the same guys that i was just wrestling you know before where i was you know so it's like well what does that do um, so yeah, but it's really, really tough, you know, to sort of try to understand that, you know, you know, absolute, you know, mega like, you know, construct of this, like what's the impact on, you know, on that level? Like it's impossible to say, like, cause it, like, again, like if this is just, for you know battleground and that's it whatever you know like it might not do that much but again it's like well like well like it still gets the eyes on on people and still gets people you know like like us or even just the semi-casual wrestling fans going oh what you know like i was doing that for a while i was going like oh what you know like <laughs> you know and that's the thing. That's that's what you know. It should be. It, you you like the forbidden door has been opened. The you know all of those cliches or whatever. They can take that door and shove it. I don't care. Like cause this is the sort of thing that wrestling should be. It should be. Oh crap! You done that. You know. And now how is it going to like span out? Because again, like you look at it. It does feel like now the Attitude Era in some ways because, again, it feels like, you know, even though TNA is sort of down there and people like to push it way down there and think of it as way down there and whatnot uh, and all of that sometimes, it is still really, really useful and it is still another brand like ECW was back in the day, back to, you know, WCW and, and WWE. Now you've got AEW and now you've got TNA sort of still fighting away and still trying to be that dog in the fight. And it's like, this is almost feels like, you know, the EC, almost an ECW style of in like thing that they could have done like, back in those days, like, when they did that sort of angle and said, hey, we're going to have an ECW guy come, you know, onto our show and do some stuff, or two ECW guys come onto our show and do some stuff, 
to get that interest, to get those fans, you know, those crossover fans, you know, going, oh, okay, cool, we can actually get to see this, or the casual fans going, who the fucking heck is this, or whatever, or I know who that is, holy crap, I can't believe, you know, Sandman's on Raw, or whatever, and it gives that extra edge to the product, and it gives that, you know, air of unpredictability to everything. Even if you can sort of see through it and be like, man, you know, they're bringing Jordan in, Grace in, they're giving her like a token victory, probably, and then having her lose, even by shenanigans again, perhaps. But still, like, like if you look at it that way, that's probably what's happening, and it probably will be what's happening. But still, like, it's monumental, absolutely monumental that they did this. Because, yes, sure, as, you, as I sort of said, you talk about Mickey James wearing that title into the Rumble like a couple of years ago, back in uh, 2022. Like, that was that was crazy. But that was just because, again, Mickey so happened to be the champion at the time and she was under contract to TNA and they said, well, what can we do to get you over here for the Rumble? Hey, well, let me represent TNA. Let me walk in with the title and walk, let me walk in with my TNA entrance music and TNA gear. Okay. They agreed to that. That's fine. Like the no like the one with Naomi, that one was a huge, like, like, holy shit one. That one was out of like the box. Like I said, like there's obviously it makes some degree of sense. Um, but again, it's like, it could have easily gone without it. Like in some ways, like you, you imagine that rumble without it, it's like a little bit bland and whatnot, but still um, it really set up a whole lot of stuff that is happening now. Like, like this, if this was to happen out of the blue, like, like, like what the heck, like that would be even a big, a bigger thing. Like if it was out of the blue and no one really knew, or no one had really seen her before in the WWE or seen the TNA title and whatnot in WWE, um, like that would be even bigger. But now, but again, it kind of feels like it's part of the same kind of like, well, let's do something and let's see how it pans out kind of thing and and like i think they really did that with like the rock and cody Rhodes, which was great because like you know i know that there's people that are out there that really wanted roman and what what not to ha and rock to have a match and that'd be a great match sure but like they might still have that match don't know we'll have to wait and see but again what we got out of um Cody and people, you know, rallying behind was another Daniel Bryan-esque thing, something that most of the fans had gotten behind and invested in. And that's what wrestling is. You know, I'm a TNA guy, like, realistically. I don't really watch anything else. Like, I see some stuff here and there, but, like, and I know that there are you know, guys that just watch NXT or just watch this or just watch that. And that's cool too. Or you try to watch everything, which is going to be a really tough, tough, um, you know, uh, challenge. But still, I know there are people there that challenge themselves to watch basically everything. So, but still, like, dude, like, it, it, I don't know what else to say here, dude. Like... <laughs> Wow, <laughs> this is this is like still mind blowing to me, uh, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, <laughs> like I can't see like if this is going anywhere beyond, you know, the battleground pay per view, like aces, absolute aces, like that. That like I think like if if there's more to it at some point. Like, what could you say? Like, maybe you see some of or some more of the TNA champions in WWE, but how do you introduce them in a sense to that audience? You know, that's the thing. Like, Jordan kind of got introduced at the Rumble and people kind of know who she is, I guess. 
uh, to some extent. And there's obviously, again, smart marks and whatever and all of that that know who everything and whatever is, and they might not really be following it like I'm not really following some things and whatnot, but I know about some of these other people that are in other promotions and whatnot. So it's like, oh, okay, that's this person from that promotion or whatever. Oh, I've never heard of this person. Okay, cool. Who the frick are this, is this person or whatever? Uh, you know, like, again, and you get that with some people. You go, well, they haven't really built a name at all for themselves or re a really big name for themselves. So they're just like, a, you know, a guy or J-A-G, just another guy in a sense. But, you know, when they have that showing and, like, you go, holy crap, they're not just another guy or just another gal or whatever. They are very good and they are, you know, well worth, like, checking out potentially or this promotion might be well worth checking out, which I definitely would say that it definitely is to those people who, you know, might be like, hey, what the heck is, you know, this TNA thing or whatever, you know, should I give it a watch? You know, like, yeah, dude, you should. Like, especially right now, TNA is in, like, its best period probably ever since, like, 07 to 09. Like, it had a really good last couple of years but it's really having like its best like best years the, in these this last couple of years and yes like some of that has come because of like things that have happened in wwe naomi walking out etc coming to tna that whole thing and then jordan going into the rumble and whatnot and now this so again like some of that you can't really like take away but they've been doing really great stuff otherwise and like if they could do anything anything on the level or you know even close to the same level like get or even get another tv deal or get their tv deal to actually be a national or an in, semi-international one in at least the us and canada you know like that was available in every home in in both in both countries that would be like you know doubling or tripling tna's audience and they would they would really be a really really strong number number three contender or even number two contender potentially, like if they were on a national syndication, like you would see it. Like they get just as good YouTube numbers and subscriptions and whatnot as what AEW does. So again, they don't have like anything really that. Like, there's some stuff that you go, oh, yeah, that wasn't as amazing or whatever. Like, when Callahan returned in, in a match, you know, involving Jordan Grace and it kind of flubbed the finish and whatnot. And same with PCO, it flubbed the finish. But still, it was like, you know, that was to set up that thing. And it's like, well, yeah, sure, they did that for the moment and whatnot. And it, and it led is leading to something else you know, down the track sort of thing. So there is still that um, there and reason for it. It's not just because or lol or whatever, uh, etc. But still, <laughs> I want to just say, holy shit, holy shit. Oh, that's all I want to say. It's just absolute holy shit. What do you guys think of this? Uh, as I said, this is insane to me. Um I don't think I'm going to tune in to see it. I don't know. I don't know because I've never really watched. Like, I've seen some stuff from NXT, and I know NXT used to be, like, back in the day, <coughs> sounding like a boomer here again, but it used to be a lot better than, like, the main roster. But now, like, the main roster is kind of under Triple H's guidance has kind of been coming up to the same sort of level as what NXT was and is still keeping that same sort of, you know, sports entertainment for the casual audience vibe to it, which is, you know, a really good. And, yes, NXT has kind of, like, lessened some of that vibe of, like, this has to be, you know, for, you know, a certain thing or whatever. It has to be a sports entertainment vibe. It, it still has that vibe to a sense, but it has lessened it a little bit, which has kind of, like, brought it back to being, like, somewhere in the middle between like where they were as a sort of pure wrestling sort of and storytelling side sort of side of things to a more almost like what TNA is actually honestly in a sense where they do stories and they do stuff to try to 
you know, capitalize on the casual audience, but they also do really great wrestling every single week and, you know, tell a really great story every single week, um, you know, and whatnot. So, but yeah, guys, like, holy shit, like, ah, this is crazy. And I'm still going to be buzzing off of this for a while, I think. And so are many other people. And there's going to be so many videos about this. And I don't even care, like, if, like, two people watch this. There's usually two people watch these things. But if more people watch it, hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you do subscribe as well if you have been watching this one. Uh, it has gone on for a, quite a while. But I wanted to mark out a bit on this one, guys. So, so sorry if it's gone a bit long or whatever. But I wanted to analyze it and think, like, what is the sort of, like, like li so limited potential of this like yeah sure she comes in she gets a token win she loses at the pay-per-view blah blah and then moves on then nothing else happens or maybe it happens in a few months or something or whatever who knows but like it's this one and done deal type thing whatever cool whatever for the most part um but what if it leads to more you just have to look at that and you have to think like, bro, what could happen? So, yeah, that is great to to kind of contemplate and to think about and really fun, really interesting. So many levels there to, to like unpack and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Hope you guys will join me again in another one.